Hello everyone, welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I'm here with the Blue Moon Mark II lander from Blue Origin with some additional thoughts on it. Uh, this is the model from EsaQuest that I made Realism Overhaul configurations for as featured in a previous video where I tested those. But this is more of a talking video where I talk more about the design of the lander. And uh, Dbot on in the comments had raised some questions that I'll try to broach, but they actually brought up some other possibilities that I came up with and that's what I'm going to talk about. So the first thing was the docking port situation with it and how they're going to get in and out. So first of all on the surface there's a hatch here and so that's how they're going to get in and out presumably on the surface. Then there's a docking hatch here, this port here that's shielded. But it's, it's interesting to put it here because, well, the RCS ports wouldn't be very well balanced for docking, considering the very heavy fuel tanks here, potentially, uh, if we're going to dock here. That's, so that's not that great, but, I mean, it's doable. So that's potentially where they dock to the station, the Lunar Gateway, at. And then uh, another vehicle, the vehicle from Lockheed, would come in and refuel them from this docking port. So this docking port was meant to be a refueling docking port, as far as I could tell. And if they're docked to the station over here, then certainly that would leave this docking port free for refueling uh, from the Lockheed uh, vehicle. And I don't know exactly what to call it, but that vehicle would also have three BE-7 engines from Blue Origin. Uh, but it did uh, occur to me that, well, the fuel tanks are rather large in volume compared to the fuel that we need them to carry. Now, that might be because of future capabilities. Or, if you made them toroidal tanks, and actually did have a tunnel go through all the way to that docking port, that isn't a problem in space, right? If, if you were docking to the station there, that's not actually a problem. Uh, that people just float through the tunnel, it's not like they need a ladder or anything. And also, uh, in that case, the tunnel could potentially serve as radiation shielding for certain events, because the tanks, if they're filled with fuel, uh, actually are fairly thick and they are probably more shielded than say the interior of the space station or the crew cabin here so actually putting a tunnel through is not a bad idea however I don't think they're actually doing that because that would make the tanks very difficult to construct toroidal tanks are more difficult to construct than uh, these kinds of tanks if they're solid like that so but that's a possibility now, there's another thought, and this uh, had occurred to me while making the video, and also was sort of brought up by Dbot, and that's that, well, the lander engines are at the bottom here. Now, that's inconvenient for a few, there's positives and negatives about this. Uh, the positives are that they can more easily point to the center of mass if one of them fails. So the center mass is probably going to be up here. And so if they're not at the bottom, they would pr presumably be like, let's say, let's just talk about two different versions, one with this and then one with four up here and compare the two situations. So these would be more capable of firing through the center of mass than these would be. And if one of these failed, you'd have to switch off the opposite one. So that's a uh, rub there. The downside here is that when they land, they're going to be kicking up a whole lot of lunar regolith. And that lunar regolith can get into the engines. And so far with our lunar landers, like with Apollo or with sample return missions from the Soviet Union or China, uh, the ascent stage, the stage that's getting off of the lunar surface, is, was a different stage and was shielded during landing. Uh, it was on top of the descent stage. so. We didn't have to worry about the descent engine at all because it wasn't going to be used again. The ascent engine was sort of encased and then was able to fly off uh, and was never exposed to regolith at all. But these will be exposed. I mean, they're sort of recessed in, which is fine, but uh, still things can get inside. So if they're higher up, then the amount of regolith they blast is reduced and also they are probably more, uh, probably less susceptible to it. Uh, also, but they'd be easy, easier to clean if necessary, if that uh, became a thing. It's also the case that 
we'd have to feed the propellant lines through the cabin basically it's also taking up potential space here right to have the engines here but we have to then feed the propellant lines through the cabin and if we want this to be modular and you know the blue moon lander to be modular and everything we don't really want the cabin to uh be i mean we want sort of this to be its own separate unit we actually want landing legs on here so more like we would want something like this maybe not in line with the engines though that could be a technique too um we want something like this and then for the payload to essentially hang off and then we could very easily change out the crew cabin with a cargo version without having to worry about the engines at the bottom or the fuel lines that connect the engines to the tanks and so that's a positive for this uh, sort of situation another negative for having the engines up here though is be is the fact that they might blast the cabin and probably if you've seen the rcs thrusters on the lunar module they, there's actually little uh plates that protect the lunar module from the blast of the rcs thrusters these are going to be much more powerful engines so we would need something to sort of shield the any payload down here from the blast of them also uh, this is already six meters in diameter so if we're going to have engines out here then that's too much for the fairing of uh, the New Glenn rocket. So, and this is going to be sent by New Glenn. So we would probably want them actually not up there, but more like this. And we'd probably want the cabin to be less than six meters in diameter, probably five. So we get less cabin space like that. So the fact that they're recessed in, uh, well, if we're gonna make the cabin less, that cuts out the volume anyway so that's a wash as far as the benefits are concerned so that's the question i mean personally because i'm in kerbal space program <laughs> i i like this version better because then i could sling something drop it off and then maybe uh the blue moon mark ii could fly off right i mean we could have we could actually sort of have it docked like this and then just plop the container down and then fly off so I would like Blue Moon Mark II to be more like that and then just plop off whatever's down there or if it's a crew cabin it could be st stuck there permanently but um, yeah this is more like what I would be looking for but as long as the engines are at the bottom of the cabin here that's not what we're getting so that's my thought and I can make an adapter like I can make a special part that adapts these sorts of elements in instead of having it the way we have here and i'll just have it as a new part that's an add-on to the isa quest model but we would probably need a different cabin like this or i could just leave it be i mean uh, do you guys think that this is a good idea or a bad idea to have the engines sort of up here instead of down there should i make a part like that that would have the landing legs and the engines up here what, what if I end up tipping over and notice that the width and length here are 11.3 meters and that seems wider than the actual base of this so maybe there's some fudge factor here that's allowing us to avoid tipping over by extending those a bit but uh, the colliders don't seem to be any bigger so anyway so yes maybe if I make my own landing legs uh, things will tip over when this was very nicely not tipping over in the previous video but yeah, tell me if you think that that's an interesting adaptation to make or whether I'm barking up the wrong tree. Uh, but So I've tried to outline the benefits and drawbacks. The drawbacks to putting them up there is they're going to blast things here, potentially, if even though they're not going to blast as much, kick up much regolith. Uh, and these are better at pointing through the center of mass than those would be. Those would require the opposite one to turn off. But on the other hand, uh, we have one extra engine anyway so and those might be less susceptible to damage it depends oh, of course they'll be sort of encased anyway they're not going to be having their machinery bare like that there's gonna be a fairing around them so yeah I was just thinking about that modification to Blue Moon Mark II uh, just having it be easier to put payloads on and take them off and whether that would make it more usable and also the potential for ha using the tunnel through the tanks as a radiation shield uh, for special events like this. Some 
uh, extra solar activity or something like that happening, they could crawl into the tunnel to be extra safe. The radiation specialists will have to tell me whether that's actually the case, uh, whether the tanks will be actually protecting them more. Ideally, you'd want water to surround them, not hydrogen and oxygen, but you know, hydrogen and oxygen make up water anyway. <laughs> anyway, yeah, radiation specialists will have to figure that out. So those are additional thoughts on Blue, the Blue Moon Mark II lander from Blue Origin. And sorry for just making this a talking episode, but there you have it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.